The future, a world where the quest for truth has ended. Do you believe in the supernatural, Mr. Vendarius? Surprise! The Shada will bring hell to Earth for thousands of years. Shock Division, kill them all! Spirit Blade, a full cast audio drama. Download the Legacy Edition of Spirit Blade for free at spiritblade.com. All right, buckle up. This car has a spoiler. I just finished uh, watching Justice League Dark Apocalypse War in my office, and that having uh, watched that, having uh, just recently watched Ju or, uh, the Death of Superman and Reign of the Supermen, which I think was the last DC movie, uh, at least that involved main Justice League characters like Superman and. Um, and, yeah, I, I'm going to give some spoilers to the end of Reign of the Superman, the animated movie. Uh, so if you don't want spoilers for the end of that one, you want to tune out. Um, because there's just some stuff related to Lex Luthor that uh, is relevant. Anyway, let's just jump into it. Wow. Um, working my way backward, we ended with a second Flashpoint event. You know, they... This this was such a, a dark movie, you know. Um, I think that that title is half in reference to the the team Justice League Dark, and half in reference to just the nature of this thing. Um, but anyway, it, I felt like it kind of had to end that way. But what was interesting was that we didn't get either before the credits or after the credits really the resolution of what the DC Universe was set back to, or set newly to. Um, I, I think we can get a glimpse of that if you watch the special feature on the DVD that gives a sneak peek for Superman, The Man of Tomorrow, which is the next animated DC movie, which is basically a retelling of Superman's origin, which is also apparently going to involve like the origins of multiple Justice League characters. So it looks like Superman, Man of Tomorrow is... Um, without them overtly stating it, going to be the start of a new DC animated continuity, or if they're not going to, again, have uh, all their movies or half of their movies, you know, part of the same animated movie continuity, then you know, at least it's a fitting next movie after them kind of hitting the reset button at the end of this one. But uh, they really went to a heavy place where, like, the the best ending that this movie could offer was like saying, you know what, this was so bad, it's better that we just wipe out the whole universe and start over, you know. <laughs> I mean, um, that's, the, that's the idea of a happy ending for this movie. You know you got a dark movie when that's your <laughs> happy ending. <laughs> um, yeah, so then we had a Trigon and Darkseid going at it at the very end there. Lots of, I mean... Lots of deaths. Well, there's too many to talk about, and and so many of them were handled so well. I mean, like the the final moment with Lois, and and they didn't reverse that many of them. They reversed Constantine's death, and they reversed uh, Damian Wayne's death, but not many others. I mean, you could argue that like the Justice Leaguers, they got ripped apart in the opening scene, um, or in the flashback to the to what was the events of the opening scene. Um, you know, they got turned into evil cyborgs later on, you know. Uh, but those still felt like deaths when I was watching them, you know. Uh, but, you know, the death of Lois, the death of Lex Luthor. I mean, there's just, there were so many moments. And I was surprised at how I, how much I felt the impact of all of them, you know. Um, man, uh, I really was involved emotionally, you know. I, I wondered... Um, I figured Batman was going to have to come back from the darkness in some way. He's just too respected and celebrated and loved of a character for them to have him end on an evil note. Even though, since they committed to ultimately having Flash do a Flashpoint event again, uh, you know, they, they could have done that. But, you know, I think fans would not have liked the idea that Batman could ultimately and permanently be corrupted, you know. Um, but... Yeah, a lot of stuff. Uh, what else? What else? Um, 
Superman, I'm glad that Superman kind of got his powers back at the end and was able to kind of have a, you know, a, a good fight with Darkseid, at least for a little while. I really wanted to see him restored, you know. Um, but, wow, this was, uh, I... I don't want to overlap. I mean, some of this I could share in a non-spoiler review, you know, which I'll record shortly, but um, I really just appreciated the heaviness of all of this and, and just the, the emotion that I felt surprisingly frequently throughout the... Well, I don't want to say frequently. More often than in any other DC animated movie I've watched before. Maybe not as deeply. Maybe there was other movies where there were fewer moments like that, but they were they hit me more deeply. But this movie certainly more frequently had like I could sense my tear ducts preparing to activate you know and you know that 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 kind of flushing or whatever that happens in your face that you feel before you're about to cry um and uh, yeah it was uh yeah I really really enjoyed it I'm trying to think of what else would be on the tip of my tongue the problem with like trying to do a spoiler car video on this movie is that there's so much shocking stuff that happens in this movie I mean, it's just overwhelming to think about all the different things that I would want to bring to mind. Uh, I felt like there were things going on with the Titans and with Trigon and with Raven um, that were the culmination of character arcs that I have not invested in because I didn't watch the, the previous movies involving them. But after watching this, I'm tempted, if they're cheap enough, to go back and maybe buy some of those... DC movies that are part of this continuity that I skipped before. Um, so it's yeah, it's kind of like the uh, Avengers Endgame effect, where uh, that movie got that movie and Infinity War got me to care about characters that I previously didn't care about uh, enough to find their movies and buy them cheaply and watch them again. Um, you know, because because the the final. The, the end of the story elevates even the the weaker elements, you know. And in this case, I don't necessarily think those movies are... Uh, the, the DC animated movies I skipped are weak. They just don't interest me as much, you know. Um, so, anyway. Yeah, I think that's about all I have to say. It's just, I mean, it's ironic because this is going to be a pretty short, short spoiler car video. I feel like there's so much I could talk about. But because there's so much, it's too overwhelming to even try to bring a few things to mind, you know. Um, but I loved how... I loved how shocking this was and I guess maybe if I were to start maybe when I post this video publicly um well here I'll I'll put this invitation out to patrons to patrons that watch this um if you want to start up a spoiler conversation below that will give me time to kind of gather my thoughts remember some of the many things that were spoilery and we can just enjoy a spoiler conversation in the comments below um, when this goes up for patrons and when it goes public I'll put the same invitation out there for anybody who watches the uh, the public version of this up on the YouTube channel um, So and I'd be happy to just uh, recount some of the spoilery moments, but uh, Everyone beware don't look at the comments below uh, wherever you find this <laughs> Content <laughs> if you don't want to be spoiled for the movie. So anyway, that's all I have to say No, it's not no, it's not. I thought of one more thing. I had to come back out to my car. Because this thing I can't talk about in the review, and I want to mention it now. I mentioned I was going to spoil some Lex Luthor stuff. Um, at the end of Reign of the Superman, Lex Luthor comes into the Watchtower and says something like, uh, I'm going to join the Justice League. And everybody's like, what the crap? And that was a real what the crap moment. And it seemed like they were going to be doing something with that and really kind of like... I was waiting in this movie, in the opening scenes, for them to justify why is Luther suddenly allowed in the Justice League? Why is he in this group? Why do any of them trust him? I'm trying to think of, of like who Luther has been up to this point in the in this you know continuity that they've the shared continuity uh, animated movies. Maybe he hasn't been an all-out villain yet, or at least uh, caught or whatever, but. Um, I'm trying to remember if he actually, if Superman actually knows, he, if he just hated Superman and that was the only thing he was really guilty of in the, in the movies up to this point, or if he actually committed a crime. I can't remember. I, you know what? I think the first time he appeared was in The Death of Superman. And between The Death of Superman and Reign of the Superman, I don't think he actually did anything criminal. I think he did a bunch of stuff that was very self-serving, and he hated Superman. But I don't think he ever did anything criminal. 
So, okay, because here I was going to get on here and complain that, like, why does no, why, why does nobody in the beginning of this movie object to Luther being like, Luther, you've been trying to kill Superman for years and we all know you're evil. Why are we letting you on the Justice League? And I think what I'd forgotten is that in this continuity, that had not been established about Lex Luthor. And that he maybe just hated Superman. So, um, but I, yeah, it was just, just at this very moment that I, I realized that maybe he did not commit actually any crimes in this current animated continuity that they were closing up. But, uh, anyway, yeah, yeah. Okay, I guess that's all I had to say. This really makes me want to go back and, and not just watch... Uh, it, it's the, It's got that endgame effect where it's like, oh, you had this big ending. Um, it just felt like you saw so many of these DC characters and so many of them die horribly. And, uh, and it just ended on this, like, note of, okay, the worst of it is over, but there's still so much that's been lost, you know. Um, and so there's this sense of closure and finality, and it's over, and it makes me want to go back and watch not just the DC animated movies that are part of this continuity, but the ones that came prior to it, and even, I think, maybe some Justice League animated series stuff. My son Asher has, uh, after watching Superman and Reign of the Super- or Death of Superman and Reign of the Superman, He's on this animation kick, and he he wants to watch all the animated stuff that is like part of a con- the continuing saga that would you know like th- any anything that's that has like through lines in the plot, like stuff related to Dark Side and the Superman animated series and stuff. So we actually spent a couple nights uh, taking time in my office with me going through all of the episodes, and with the help of Wikipedia, picking out the ones that would be relevant to that kind of, you know, desired viewing experience. And I might go through and watch some of those key episodes with him. I don't know. Um, but this, you know, as a fan of the the DC Universe, this certainly... Um, you know, I knew all the players, even though I didn't uh, know, like, I hadn't watched Justice League Dark yet. I know who John Constantine is, roughly. Clearly there's a history there between him and Swamp Thing, and I, I remember something about that from the comics, but having not seen the movie, I don't know what they're referencing here. And so, um, but it's, it was cool. It was like, it was like watching, um, and this isn't spoilery stuff, it's just, you know, extra stuff that's not worth putting in the main review. It was like reading a big crossover event with a ton of characters, and now and then stuff is being referenced that you don't quite understand because you don't follow the books that, of the characters that are kind of referencing stuff. But you maybe know just enough, and maybe the script itself in front of you gives you just enough to kind of appreciate what's going on. And so it, it definitely has that kind of feel of reading a crossover, uh, you know, story when you only follow some of the books, um, which I've gotten used to. You know, it just... In, in fact, it's kind of like a neat thing to just know that, okay, I don't know whatever that story is. Sounds like there's a history there. And it just makes the world feel big and real and fleshed out and lived in, you know. Um, kind of like the feeling of playing um, uh, Oblivion or Skyrim, one of these big open world RPGs, and realizing, oh, the world just kind of keeps continuing on even when I'm not in the room, you know. I, it's... Uh, Everybody has their routines, they're going about their stuff, it just feels like this is a big world. And it doesn't only exist when I'm around, you know? <laughs> so that's kind of a cool feeling. Oh wait, okay, I mean, away. Oh, I don't know what that is, but I'm going, thanks. The future, a world where the quest for truth has ended. Do you believe in the supernatural, Mr. Vendarius? <laughs> Surprise! The Shada will bring hell to Earth for thousands of years. Shock Division, kill them all! Spirit Blade, a full cast audio drama. Download the Legacy Edition of Spirit Blade for free at spiritblade.com.